Hey everyone, it's Adam. I'm really excited to share with you this video on what's new in Mix Effect 2.1.0. It's been a while since I released an update to the app, but I guarantee you after watching this video, you'll agree it's been worth the wait. So today's topics include an ATEM compatibility update, USB view, Mac Catalyst, odds and ends, bug fixes, and what's coming next. I'll take ATEM compatibility updates for $100. That's a Jeopardy joke if you didn't catch that. Okay, so at NAB in Las Vegas 2024, just a few weeks ago, Blackmagic Design released two new ATEM switchers, the ATEM 1ME Constellation 4K and the ATEM 2ME Constellation 4K. I've had support for those two switchers in MixEffect. In addition, I've modified the app so that it can detect future ATEM switchers that Blackmagic Design might release so that you'll be able to use them while you wait for me to update them for full compatibility. All right, moment you've all been waiting for, USB view. What is it? I've added external camera support to MixEffect. This means you can plug in your ATEM directly into MixEffect and uh, see the program output, or if you do a few things, see the multi-view output. Um, and when you combine that with the multi-view overlay feature that already exists in MixEffect, you can now see and interact with your ATEM directly in the app. It's really exciting. I'm going to show you how that works just a little bit. So first, requirements. You need a Mac running macOS 14 or an iPad with a USB-C port running iPadOS 17. This is not available on iPhones because iOS 17 lacks support for external cameras. WWC is coming up in just a month. Maybe that will change. We'll see. Second, you need an ATEM that supports multi-view output. Fortunately, almost all ATEMs have a multi-view out. I think the only one that doesn't is the original ATEM Mini. Now, some ATEMs output the multi-view through an HDMI port, some of them through an SDI port. So I'm going to show you real quick what you need. So over here, we have an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, and it has two auxiliary outputs, which you can use to output program or an input or the multi-view. So we have two and one right here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to need to buy an HDMI to USB adapter. And it looks kind of like this. You got HDMI on one end, you got USB on the other end, and you may need a USB-A adapter like this. So we'll plug in the USB-C adapter into the HDMI cable like that. And plug it in like this, like this. Okay, and we can see a signal flow um, right here on how that looks. So we got the ATEM Mini Extreme, got the capture stick, goes into a hub, and I'll explain why we need a hub in a second, finally goes into the iPad Pro. So the reason why I recommend using a USB-C hub like this is because it has a lot more ports. So you got Ethernet, and Ethernet is great when using MixEffect on an iPad because it provides a very stable connection to the ATEM switcher. It has power, so you can make sure your iPad never runs out of battery. And it has HDMI out, so you can actually use your iPad as an input into your ATEM switcher. And finally, it has a bunch of USB-C or USB-A ports here that you can use to plug in the HDMI adapter like this like that, okay? Now, if you have an ATEM constellation uh, or uh, an ATEM switcher that has SDI multi-view outputs, you're gonna need to use this signal flow. So here we have an SDI to HDMI microconverter, and then that plugs into the HDMI capture stick, which then goes into the USB-C hub, which then goes into the iPad Pro. So. The microconverters look like this. This is the Blackmagic Design SDI to HDMI 3G microconverter. You can also use a bi-directional converter. Um, this is what I'm actually using to do this demo that we're seeing right now. So I'm going to switch over to the iPad. And we can see here the iPad is currently running uh, USB view. And you can see. Um, over here, I've created a new switcher page called USB MultiView. Now, normally, 
when you use MixEffect, you probably have your switcher panel set up like this. this is the default, but you can just create a new page here. I'm going to switch to the USB multi view and I'm going to edit this page and show you how it works. So, first, I'm going to remove the USB view here. I'm going to close this and you can see the USB view is gone. So, we're going to edit this page again and then we're going to add a panel at the top. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to USB view. Then we're going to tap edit and then move it up to the top, just like that. And now we have USB view working right here. Now, I'm not going to unplug. In fact, I'll unplug the USB camera, uh, the adapter, and we see that it's unplugged. Now it says connect external camera. So I'm going to plug it back in and I'm going to choose the camera that appears. And there you go. Now, normally with the multi view overlay off, I just turned this button off right here, you just get the output from the webcam or the HDMI output. So if I touch, Anywhere here, nothing's going to happen because there's no overlay. But if you push one of these buttons down here, and this the number of buttons that appear to, it corresponds to the number of multi views that your ATEM switcher has. So the Constellation 2 me has two multi views. So I'm going to push this, and we see now we have these little labels that appear. So you can see I'm toggling them on and off, and you see the labels appear. And now I can touch these rectangles, and it will do things. So if I double tap on this area here, these are program and preview, it will perform an auto transition. Now you see me, I'm going to double tap. You can't see me double tapping, but I'm going to tap this. In fact, I can actually show you like this. So now um, I'm going to double tap right here. And it performs that auto transition that you see here. Now, if I tap on, if I go back to the iPad like this, if I tap on any of these squares here, it will turn, turn these into preview like that. I can also right click on these things to get uh, a menu, send that to preview. Now this one happens to be super source right here. So I can actually right click on here to get a list of the super source presets. So if I didn't use this switcher panel over here, I could actually just right click here and then choose these different ones. So if I want to choose iPad pip, like that. I want to go to the iPad right or iPad left. Or I want to go back to this presentation and pip. You see, it's like that. So we'll go back to this one right here. So that is USB view running on MixFact 2.1.0. Again, only available on Macs running Mac OS 14 and iPads running iPad OS 17 with a USB-C port. But I think it's going to really transform the way you use MixEffect because now you can see the multi-view and touch and interact with it right uh, in the app. It's fantastic. I've been using it for quite some time now um, in testing, and it's transformed the way that I use MixEffect personally. So I encourage you to check it out. Now, before we move on to the next section, I want to talk about some USB view limitations. So the first thing is that you can only have one instance of USB view running at a time, and that includes multiple mix effect windows. So you can't have one mix effect window here and another mix effect window here, both connected to either the same or different USB webcams or external cameras. Um, second, you want to make sure that you've selected the correct multi-view overlay. So I'm going to demonstrate that by switching over here. We see that I'm using multi-view overlay number one here, but if I tapped number two, we see that the labels change and it's completely wrong. This is like program and preview, and then there's buttons here, there's buttons here. It looks like it's a grid of four things. So we look in settings and we look at multi-view, we can see that multi-view two is actually this one here. And multi-view one is the one that we want is right here. So we go back to the multi-view switcher with the USB view. We want to tap on this one and we know this is the correct one. So you want to make sure that if you're using USB view and you turn on the multi view overlay to make sure that you have the correct overlay turned on. Now, announced that NAB was the ability for the USB C connection to be able to send any another output other than program. So right now, all USB C outs from ATEMP show the program view, but they did a demo of the resolve replay feature that showed them changing that output into multi-view. So this is really exciting because then you think you can just plug your ATEM 
directly. You don't need the HDMI to USB adapter um, or an SDI to HDMI converter. You can just plug the USB straight into the mix effect device. Um, will this come to all ATEM switchers? We're not sure. Uh, the demo that they showed used an ATEM Extreme. Uh, so will this work on a Constellation uh, or an ATEM Mini? We'll find out. Second, you may still want to use the HDMI aux or the dedicated SDI multi-view outputs. And I'll explain why. So if we take a look at this ATEM Mini Extreme ISO again, we have two aux outs and we have two USB ports. So sometimes, or a lot of times, people use one of the USB ports to plug into a laptop so they can do like a zoom uh, and use that webcam. And the second one is used for an SSD so they can record um, footage to, to a drive. Since this is the ISO, they can record all the ISO footage. So if you're using both of those two ports, you can't use the USB-C port. And if you want to use one for the SSD and one for the multi-view, then you can't use it in a Zoom meeting because it's being used on your iPad. So that's the reason why I think um, a lot of people still might want to use the HDMI aux or the dedicated SDI multi-view outputs on the more expensive ATEM switchers. But again, this feature hasn't been released yet, so when it is, uh, we'll be sure to test it out. Now, let's get on to the next section, which is Mac Catalyst. The macOS version of MixEffect used to be uh, an app that was basically the iPad version of the app. And I've converted it to be a Mac Catalyst app, which can take advantage of more Mac uh, UI elements. So the foundation is there for MixEffect on the Mac to look more Mac-like in the future. Right now, it still pretty much looks like the iPad version. But I needed to do this conversion because USB view wouldn't work in the design for iPad destination. Now, in terms of availability, the Mac Catalyst version of MixEffect Pro, which is the paid upfront version of MixEffect, is already available on the App Store. And the Mac Catalyst version of the free to download MixEffect that comes with the Pro in app purchase is currently in review and should be out soon. So check the App Store for updates shortly. You'll notice the difference because the screenshots are, look more like a Mac rather than an iPad. So here's some pictures of how it looks like on the Mac. Um, one thing that has changed is that there's no more, uh, there's no ability to combine windows into tabs. The reason is because the interface looked kind of janky and I wasn't quite happy with it. So I temporarily removed that feature. So if you ever create new switcher instances, they'll appear in separate windows. Um, so, but you can see it looks pretty much like a, like a Mac app. Uh, and I think it's gonna, it functions pretty much identically to the previous versions of MixEffect. But if you see any problems, let me know. Okay, let's switch to odds and ends. So multi-view overlay now remembers which overlay you tapped on on a per switcher connection basis. This is really useful if you use the USB view and you just plug it in, you want the multi-view overlay to turn on automatically, it will do that now. Wide input labels. So the long name for an input is now displayed whenever you use one of the wide switcher panels. So I have a wide variety of, <laughs> pun intended, wide program preview, wide program and wide preview. And you can see the long name of the inputs listed there. Um, normally the inputs only show like four characters, which is pretty limiting and it's hard to tell what inputs what when you have 20 or more inputs. The Constellation 2ME has 20 inputs and I had to hunt and peck sometimes to find the input that I want to switch to. There's a lock icon that appears in the SuperSource presets now. So any menus listing SuperSource presets will display a lock icon if that preset has use box sources enabled. This is only available in iOS and iPadOS. Uh, the macOS displays a normal menu, and you can't display icons in those right now. So I'm going to look to see how I can fix that for macOS in the future. OK, bug fixes. So there's some rendering issues that were resolved when you resize a window when using the multi-view switcher or the remote web view. Sometimes the, the page would look too big and wouldn't resize properly, but that's been fixed. The streaming service detail, uh, I fixed an issue where content was being truncated. Super source preview should improve, um, should reflect what's on super source. Uh, sometimes it kind of like doesn't show the right thing. You kind of have to tap the super source preview to have it refresh, but it should refresh more often now. The tip jar hasn't been working since MixEffect 2.0. So if you've been wanting to, if you've been wanting to send me a tip, 
you can do so now. And there's some assorted minor bug fixes in the 2.1.0 release. Okay, what's coming up next? So the Mix Effect Companion module will be updated soon for the new ATEM switchers that were just released. And I'm attending a couple of conferences where I'm going to be meeting a lot of indie developers. There's one in Chicago, Deep Dish Swift, which I'm actually leaving for tomorrow. And then in June, there's the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference. So I'm going to be meeting a lot of developers, showing them my apps like Mix Effect, Message Filer, Album Filer, and Wipe My Screen. If you haven't seen those apps before, definitely check them out. I think you'll really like them if you're a Power Mail or Photos user or someone who likes to clean their screens religiously, check them out. So those are all the new features in Mix Effect 2.1.0, the highlight being USB View. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you incorporate USB View in your productions and seeing how getting the multi-view and interacting with it straight in Mix Effect transforms your productions. So leave a comment down below or send me an email with some screenshots. Lastly, if this is your first time watching this video, and you haven't subscribed, click that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.